Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to see the characteristics of relations. The first characteristic of a relation is ordering of tuples within a relation. In the previous video, we learned that a table is also called a relation. And we know that a relation or a table is a set of tuples or rows. Now mathematically, we know that the elements in a set do not follow any order. And as mentioned in the previous video, theoretically, relational databases were based on set theory. So therefore, just like the elements of the set need not follow any order, the tuples in a relation also need not have any particular order. But when it comes to files, all the records are physically stored on disk or in the memory. And since it's physically stored, it would be good to have an order among the records, like the first record, the second record, and so on. This helps in searching and retrieving the records faster. But otherwise, when we display a relation as a table, there is no particular order to be maintained. Here I've taken an example of a student relation with attributes, roll number, name and age. And I have three tuples in this relation. Even if I interchange the tuples in this relation, the meaning of the relation will not change. Like for example, in the same relation, if I interchange the first two rows, the meaning of the relation will remain the same. So therefore, it is not necessary for the tuples to be ordered within a relation. That is, ordering of tuples within a relation is not necessary or is not important. The next characteristic of a relation is ordering of values within a tuple. As per the definition of relation, an n-tuple is an ordered list of n values. Let me take an example. If I have a table or a relation student with attributes roll number, name and age, and if I take the values of the first tuple or the first row, it has to maintain a particular order. That is, the first value has to be a roll number of the student, the second value has to be a student name, and the third value has to be the age of the student. I cannot interchange the values within a tuple. So, ordering of values in a tuple is important with this definition where an n-tuple is an ordered list of n values. With an alternative definition of relation, the ordering of values in a tuple is unnecessary or not important. And let us see why. As per this alternative definition of relation, a tuple is defined as a set of attribute value pair. So, when we write a tuple in this form, then ordering of attributes is not important. Like for example, if I take the second tuple from this relation and write it in the form of attribute value pair, then it would be written this way where small t represents a tuple. So when a tuple is a set of attribute value pair, then ordering is not necessary because the attribute name and its corresponding value is mentioned together. Even if I change the order of these pairs as given over here, the meaning will not change. But generally, we go with the first definition itself, that is an n-tuple is an ordered list of n values. We go with the first definition because of its simplicity. Therefore, as per the first definition, ordering of values within a tuple is necessary or is important. The next characteristic of a relation is values and nulls in a tuple. Again, we have already learned in the previous video that each value in a tuple has to be an atomic value. That is, it has to be a value that cannot be divided further. Since the values has to be atomic, we cannot have composite or multivalued attributes in our DBMS. And because of that, it is called as flat relational model. We have learned in the ER model what composite and multivalued attributes are. So composite attributes are attributes that can be divided further like address. This attribute can be divided further into city, state, pin code, etc. These composite attributes are not allowed in relational databases because its values are not atomic. Instead, these composite attributes can be represented by their simple component attributes as given in this relation. So here I divided this composite attribute into city, state and pin code. So each value in the tuple has to be atomic. Also multi-valued attributes are attributes having a set of values or having multiple values for one entity. 
So in RTBMS or in relational databases, these multi-valued attributes have to be represented by separate relations or separate tables. We will learn about that in detail in the later chapters. Next, we have already learned about null values in the ER model. We can have several meanings for null values. That is, null values can be used when the value is unknown or when the value exists but it is not available or when the value is not applicable to that particular tuple. Since we have already learned about null values in the YA model, I'm just doing a quick recap here. Here I'm taking an example of a student relation. Suppose if I have an attribute say home phone or a landline phone, some students will not have a landline phone. So for those students, the attribute home phone or landline phone will not be applicable and hence the corresponding value will be null. That is the meaning of not applicable. Here this student has null for the mobile number attribute. That could mean that either he may have a mobile phone or he may not have, but we do not know, hence a null value. So the meaning of null value in this case is unknown. Also, the meaning of null value could be that the value exists but it is not available. So this is all about values and nulls in a tuple. Hope you have understood them. The last characteristic of a relation is interpretation of a relation. The relation schema can be represented as a declaration or assertion. For example, this relation schema asserts or declares that each student entity has a roll number, name, age and a mobile. So here with this relation schema, you're trying to declare something about a student and each tuple can be interpreted as a fact. For example, the first tuple in this relation student declares the fact that there is a student named Harry whose role number is 1, age is 19 and so on. We have learned about entities and relationships in our previous videos. So some relations may represent facts about entities whereas other relations may represent facts about relationships. So that is about interpretation of a relation. With this we come to the end of this video. Hope you have understood all the characteristics of relations that we discussed in this video. Thank you.